My guys had a good week this week going four and one. <clears throat> you know you like to compete when you go four and one and you're, you're upset about the week you had. So, so that's a good thing. Um, middle of the week, our, our hitters really did a good job trying to fight. We, we let the score come up in the middle of the week too high. Uh, we're able to get back into this weekend and get the score back down again. I thought we did a good job all weekend going back to getting a lot better pitching and keeping the score down for our hitters. Um, we knew that Little Rock would be able to pitch good. Uh, they were right up there with us in pitching, so we knew they'd probably keep the scores down. Wind blowing in all weekend was another factor that was going to keep the scores down. So I thought we did a good job of being able to pitch and being able to, again, win in a lot of different ways. Uh, we were able to come back after a loss of a game that, you know, on paper we should have won. We were able to come back the next night on the road and, and, and win a game that we had to score a lot of runs in. Then we were able to take a three-game series and be real consistent with it and pitch and play defense and get timely hitting. So I thought it was a good week for us. We pick up uh, a day of rest today and tomorrow. Uh, back up with a practice on Wednesday, very rare. Uh, probably our first practice of the, the whole spring, uh, believe it or not. And then Thursday we'll travel to Arlington to get ready uh, for a three-game series down there. So open up the floor to questions you might have. Tony, why, why has that wall, or at least the, the part that jumps out of it, never been padded after seeing what Dylan did and what happened in the, in the Alabama series? Is that something you think the program should spend some money on before yeah, the next I think, I, think, I think we will. I mean, uh, we, we've, I've been here now, I don't know how long the brick wall has been here, but we've never had an issue. Um, Wrigley Field has a brick outfield wall. Um, we teach them every day to go ahead feet first. When you don't do that, you get in trouble. Um, you know, we've intersquatted on that wall every day, every day, every day. I can't tell you how many, you know, thousands of intersquads we've had in the last, you know, 10, 12, 13 years and never had an issue. Um, but, you know, it, 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 two issues did crop up. So I, I know Scott and I are meeting on it and, and uh, looking into that situation. Yeah. Coach, do you, are you, do you think, are you still doing the average? Selling a lot of the sponsors for that the outfield wall. Uh -huh. Are you, do you, how many major Division One coaches do you think do that? I mean, I, that's, that's a unique thing. I mean, I I didn't even realize that. What's that? Like, do all that, the sponsor oh. and all that. You know, that's a lot of work. And I mean, you've been you've been doing that for years, correct? Yeah. You you, you want to keep doing that? <laughs> not really. No. I, don't <laughs> that. I mean, when you got the number one team in the country. I'm curious. At some point, you're not going to have to worry about all that. You know. Well, I mean. <laughs> It is what it is, you know. <laughs> My dad told me a long time ago when they give you a job, you take your job and, and you do the best that you can do with it and you make sure that when you leave it, uh, it's better off than when you got it. Uh, he's told me a thousand times that most of the time when you get a job, somebody stole it from it, used it, uh, used it for their benefit. And so you're, you're going to get it and it's not going to be in good shape. So the last thing I want you to do is when you step down, you make sure that the next guy has it way better than you have it. So, you know, it is what it is. You keep your mouth shut and you, you work. <laughs> and how, how, long, uh, how long do you think Millhorn stays in that long relief role? Does he get back to the weekend? We, we like him out of the bullpen, believe it or not. Uh, so we, we're going to probably keep him in the pen for right now with us. <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll, we'll work from there uh, as he builds back up some tolerance. Um, but we do like him out of the bullpen. Um, and right now, um, you know, the three starters that have gone for us have been good. Um, and we'll work to just build his tolerance back up. Is, is that something you maybe would not have been able to consider as much if Booty hasn't been as he has? No doubt. No doubt. I mean, uh, you know, Cody's been so consistent now. <clears throat> that, and, you know, Wilson giving us what he's given us. And, of course, you see what Barron's going to give you day in and day out. So we're just, we're just very fortunate that, that this, this is a whole work in progress. I think we have, you know, even when Austin was on Friday night, I still think Barron's a Friday night guy. I still think, you know, Scoob can pitch wherever you need him. I think um, Millhorn can pitch wherever you need him. And I think Moody can pitch wherever you need him. We're just fortunate that you got movable parts. I mean, I don't know how many people could have took two guys out of their rotation, pick two. You know, we picked Austin Millhorn and had to back him up a little bit and slow him down and still stay on the path that, that, that we're staying on. So we're just very fortunate. Um, but Millhorn gives you that extra weapon into the bullpen now with Plitt, with Bazaar. Um, 
he's got three pitch mix, and and he cannot he doesn't have to just go uh, three outs for you. I mean, he can he can pick up in the seventh and finish a game for you. Any update on uh, Austin? And did yeah, uh, Cody get it in the in the hand yesterday? Uh, yes, yeah, he got it glanced off of him. Right. He's 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 fine, so he'll be good there. Austin's did bullpen uh, looking good. He's gonna probably will do what Millhorn did. You know, uh, give a couple innings, an inning or two first, and just make sure that you know we build his tolerance back up and not just throw him right back into the, to the rotation at this time. So we, he's still on path again. <clears throat> the, the these pitchers that are throwing for him that are giving him some time to. To, to recover, uh, it's a day by day process when you run into a little tendonitis. I mean, if you look at Sharp and Che, it took us over three weeks to be able to get him back from shoulder tendonitis. And Trace Gidry uh, is just up now, two cycles of 15 throwing against hitters. He's had it since opening day. So tendonitis is nothing to play with. Uh, you, you have to give it some rest. That's the only thing that can can let that thing, you know, recover for you. You don't want to irritate it and get it flamed up again if you don't have to. So our biggest concern right now is the way we're playing. Uh, you know, they, they, they just have really helped us give Millhorn the time he needed because if we would have been going bad, you know, you have a tendency maybe to bring Millhorn back a week early. You have a tendency to bring Austin back a little early. And so what, what, what these guys are doing for, for the, both of those guys and Sharp and Che and Trace Gidry, He's really just buying them all some time to make sure that they get on the other side of, of, of what they're fighting. So I appreciate what the starters have done, being able to pick up the slack in our bullpen and giving these guys chances to come back because, again, you don't want to bring the guy back too early and then back him up for another three weeks. You expect him to pitch this weekend? We, we do. He'll, he'll make that call uh, on how he feels. He's back up Wednesday again for his next bullpen. And, uh, you know, we do with the pitchers is we, we let them kind of dictate a little bit of it, you know, because they know how they feel. Um, and it's a constant uh, talking to them about how do you feel and making sure that, uh, you know, that they feel good enough to go back out and, and start that process again. So if he feels that way, yes, you know, we'll, we'll work him in this weekend. But, but definitely not going to like two preset innings out of the starter. Yeah, I, I think he'll probably come out of the pen like we did Bill Moore. I think that's a little safer. And then, and, uh, and then from there, you know, working back up, build his tolerance back up. Tony, uh, it, it's a problem, but I know it's a problem that, that you don't mind having. Not only pitching staff, but the rest of your squad, to try and give everybody some playing time. you got a lot of guys on that bench that, uh, you know, could jump in there if you need it. Yeah, well, you know, it gives us depth, and what it's done is it's, it's kept people fresh. Um, and that's the, the big thing. Plus, we can match up a lot now, lefty versus righties, uh, figuring out what, what the pitcher's weaknesses is, and then starting a lineup that can match up to, to the pitcher. So that's not always easy to do if you don't have enough depth. You know, you have to roll your lineup out there. And if, it's, if it's heavy lefty late and there's a lefty, can't really do much about it, but we can flip flop. We can sit the lefties and play the righties. And you know, on Sunday, uh, it was the opposite. The guy struggled a little bit more against righties than lefties, so we were able to flip it. So we can flip the light up when we need to, and 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 all the guys. But to be able to do that, you got to give the players credit more than the coaches because the players have to accept that. I mean, Compton can be playing every day. There's a lot of these guys that could be playing every day, and they're platooning according to the pitcher that we're facing. So uh, give them a lot of credit and buying in and, and buying in to what we have the opportunity to do, and I think it keeps us fresh and healthy for down the stretch. Can you remember another year that you've had it like, I mean, this this deep? No, it's it's you know it's 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 not that easy to build that kind of depth because the NCAA only gives you 27 guys you can put on scholarship. So I mean you've got to you've got to fill pitchers for sure because that's a unique thing. It takes you almost 12 you know, 12 to 13 pitchers to get through a 56-game schedule. So you're eating up a lot of spots and scholarship and pitch, and then you got to flip around and, and get the hitters. Um, and, and you only can carry a 35-man roster. So and then when you get down, you know, like Adam Agel, we had to make sure, you know, when you get to an injury like that, it, it sharpens the, the roster. So it's hard to build that. It really is. We're just fortunate that... Uh, we've been able to do it, and again, I think the big players in this are Greg Davis and Powell and Claymont. 
being able to, to, to be patient and accept their roles coming off the bench. We had Joe Robbins go down on us, so that's a second position player. We'd have even more depth uh, without Mangel and Joe Robbins. So both of those kids have been redshirted. So we're two position players now. We're just fortunate that you know, with Greg uh, being able to move around for us, um, Compton accepting the left-right platoon at first base, um, Claymont being able to help us in the outfield because the outfield's pretty stacked. And with Scoop pitching now, it's pulled him out of the outfield a little bit more. So uh, in the catching situation, I mean, we, we got a great situation with a left-hand hitter and a righty. <clears throat> and then Powell can even catch also. Um, so Powell gives us a lot of utility. He can play third. He can play first. He can catch. He can play the outfield. Um, and then I think the biggest uh, factor in us this year has been Ryan Leonard's at third base. That's that's my belief. I mean, him locking down third base for us um, has really, really, I think, solidified, you know, our ball club and him handling third base. And um, so, again, I, I like our depth. It gives, it gives us a lot of opportunity to pinch hit late in the game, to pinch run, and yet we don't lose a lot. You know, normally when you bring in a guy off the bench, he's got some big deficiency. He, he might not be able to run, but he can hit. Uh, he might not be able to play much defense, but he can hit. We can put these guys into the game. We can put Greg Davis in the game. We can put Powell into the game. We can put Claymore into the game. So that's been a, a big, big plus for us, and hopefully that will uh, help us in the stretch run and not go back into the regional like we were last year with three of our hitters, you know, crippled. I mean, we had two guys with one guy with a bad leg, Harry with a bad back, and, and Adams with a bad wrist. And when those three guys are not running, you know, full speed, it, it, it creates a deficiency in, in your lineup. And hopefully with this depth, it'll keep everybody healthy, you know, for the stretch run. What's, what's the biggest challenge Arlington poses for you? Well, Arlington really doesn't pose any challenge for us. I mean, it's us on us. We worry about us. Um, um, you know, our guys are, are, are just wanting to compete night in and night out. Our biggest challenge is to do what we've been doing is go in there and pitch good because they up to the top a little bit and hitting. So we're going to have to pitch. Um, and then continue to play good defense um, and, and get timely hitting. It's a, it's a bigger ballpark over there. Um, it's a little bit more of a pitcher's ballpark. What I've been told this is the first time that we'll, we'll, we'll play there. Um, so, so again, uh, our biggest challenge really is this week, handling our two days off uh, correctly, um, getting back and having a good practice on Wednesday, staying focused on our travel day on Thursday, and, uh, and just, just working to be consistent uh, like we have all year. Uh, we, we, we talk about this all the time. We play against two things. We play against ourselves. We play against baseball, the game of baseball. And so far, we've been, hand, been able to handle ourselves and the game of baseball. And if we can keep doing that, then UTA is not, not our issue. Nobody's our issue if you can solve those two things. But boy, if you can't handle you and you can't you know, play with the game of baseball instead of against it, then anybody um, is going to be your opponent. We saw that on Tuesday night. Not to be disrespectful, but you know, you got a game on paper that you should win. But I, I tell you what, we do. We didn't handle us, and we, we, we played against the game of baseball. So guess what? You lose it. So, so it wasn't you and O that that did anything to us. It was us. We didn't handle us good, and we didn't we didn't we didn't play the game of baseball the way we should have played it. So when you have that happen to you, you're vulnerable against anybody. You've uh, touched on it previously, but to have. Yes. And not only to accept, but kind of embrace the role that he has. How big that for you guys? That's huge. You know, they understand. You know, how to play a small part of something big instead of playing a big part of something small, um, and how to be a part of the machine instead of just a piece of the machine. And uh, I mean, Shug has done an outstanding job, not only in, in accepting his role, but going from really an everyday player to Ryan coming in at third. He understands uh, what's in the best interest of the team. When he sits in the dugout, he's constantly helping the hitters. Um, he's constantly up in front of the dugout, you know, looking at the charts and stuff. And so he's almost, with, 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 his, with his age, he's almost like a coach, you know. I mean, they call him Coach Shug. And um, 
so so he's a mentor too, not just a player. And that's 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 not easy to do. I mean, usually when you don't have something in it for me, you change course. And, and Shook's never done that. Uh, he stayed the course. And uh, he's one of those guys. You know, we have we, we tell him all the time. You want to be a guy that the team wants to fight for, not fight with. And that's that's who he is. When he gets into the game, people genuinely pull for him on the bench because because he's pulling for you. And and so. He's, he's done an outstanding job for us. If he had to, he could come in and play second for us. He could come in and play third for us if we needed him to. But he has accepted his role. We think it's kept him healthy um, as he needs to be to try to help us. And he's such a just a pure hitter um, and, and being able to help us when we call on him to play in a game or pinch it off the bench, he's always ready. So I think he's another one of those guys that's just epitome of a, of a, of a team. You know, we talk about that all the time as coaches, so probably nauseam. But every year, some teams buy into it, some teams don't buy into it. And, and these guys have really accepted their roles. And when that happens, um, you get a chance to be where we're at right now. Conrad's 11 11 of 11 on the year with the runners on third base. He leads the team in steals. You always say hitting is contagious. Is this something that the rest of the team is feeding off of? Well, you know, we, we, we signed him three years ago, and I told him in, in, <clears throat> in the office that day that I'm not signing him just for his ability. I'm, I'm signing him for who he is because he can change the whole clubhouse. Um, we knew that when we recruited him. Uh, he's a gamer. Uh, he hates to lose. Um, and what he's done a better job of over the last three years is how to channel that hatred to lose. Um, it's not always an easy thing to channel. Um, he, he's been able to channel it uh, and not let it consume him or consume the team. And the one thing about him is we've always said this, mental toughness will make up for any lack of weakness you have. He might not do everything uh, perfect or pretty, but the one thing he'll do is he'll out-compete you. I mean, he's, he's going to out-compete you. And, and the one thing that um, he does such a good job of is that his mental toughness makes up for any weakness he has. And I'd rather a player like that than, you know, the underwear model that looks good, but he doesn't want to compete. And, um, you know, he's not willing to throw down. The thing about Jace is that, you know, he might get fooled on a pitch and still hit a double because his mental toughness is going to make up for any weakness that he has. And we knew that when we signed him. We signed him for that reason. Uh, was to come in, and we felt we needed more old school players that hated to lose at the time, and uh, we, we, we knew he'd give us that. And Jace has done that; he has not let us down. A little baseball strategy: Is it open for the players to bunt on their own, or do you call all those bunts? I think Caleb had a two-one count yesterday with two outs, man on at third base in the first. So, well, ninety percent of the stuff is put on, you know, um, from our third base coach, uh, stuff that they've worked on, you know. Um, and nothing you see out there, uh, you know, will usually come without a signal. Uh, there are some signals. I don't want to give everything away, but there are some times where it's it's up to you. Uh, think about it, you know. Um, but but a lot of what we do is calculated. A lot of what we do is is practiced. Um, we'll have two different kind of practices with the hitters. Uh, Normally, just regular BP, um, certain type of BP, and then there's there's what we call small ball BP, where the whole batting practice setup is on squeezes, pushes, drags, hit and runs, all the small things. Because we want to be a big team that can do the little things. When you're a physical team that can do the little things, you become very tough to defend. We can win a, a game one night against Alabama where a guy's throwing 98 miles an hour with with a, a double squeeze. Um, but if we'd have just tried to hit that guy, we'd probably lose. Um, not to be disrespectful to our hitters, but 98, if you talk to them, is tough to hit. Um, so being able to have, that's what I think made the Omaha team so good, um, is that they could handle the bat. But yet they could still hurt you. They were physical, but they could bunt, they could hit and run with the best of them. And that causes a lot of trouble for people. I mean, um, when we ran that double squeeze the other day, it, we're not only running it to, to 
to, to score, but we're also running it to try to spin the game out of control. That's the number one thing that we want to do as an offense, is try to score first and then spin the game out of control on the pitcher. And when you do little stuff like that, it spins the game out of control. Um, and, and that's our whole number one goal is to try to spin it out of control. If we can spin it out of control, then he makes a couple mistakes after that, and then we start to do damage off the wall out of the ballpark, then it's, you know, then it's ball game. Um, and that's not easy to do. Good pitchers, they manage their game good. And they never let, we, we, we teach the opposite with, to our pitching staff is to how to manage the game, how to be like Peyton Manning. He can manage a football game. I mean, he's a coach on the field. And uh, what we want out of our pitching staff is not to let the game spin out of control. Do we always do it? No, but that's our number one goal is to try not to let the game spin out of control. Our offense, we want to spin the game out of control. So all of that's practiced, and, and when we see um, a guy way back with two outs, um, we, we'll drag from time to time because it does two things. It's, 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 it's defeating. I mean, if you, if you drive that run in on a, on a drag, it's defeating to the pitcher. I mean, he's two outs, he's one out away from getting out of the inning, and all of a sudden you drive in a run now on, on a drag bunt. So all of that's practiced uh, and worked on. Uh, to try to give us chances in case we, we struggle to hit a guy, the wind's blowing in like it was all weekend. Well, now we can't sit there and just hit fly ball after fly ball after fly ball and be mad because the wind's blowing in and say, well, that could have been a home run, that could have been a home run. They don't put up a could have home run on the board, you know. I mean, they just don't. So this weekend we knew we would have to do the little things to win with the wind blowing in and Little Rock being able to pitch. And I think that's what makes us dangerous is that as an offense is that we can do more than just one thing. Any further questions? Thank you. Thanks, Coach.